We're gonna turn this shot into this shot with only $32. Hey, uh, thanks for returning my call. I'm just checking in for my rental of the three ton grip truck. I have the shoot coming up and I was supposed to receive a confirmation. Oh yes, yes, I'm about that. We do have it available, but we lost the keys so we won't be able to bring it to you. Well, can I rent a few lights and stands separately? Oh, I'm sorry, we are closed today. Good day, sir. A single light can cost anywhere from $100 to $25,000. And on top of the light, you have stands like C stands, combo stands, and modifiers like soft boxes, gels, flags, scrims. Lighting equipment can get expensive. If you could take away anything from this video, let it be this. You don't need expensive lighting to make a shot look good. Yes, better lighting has better color accuracy, higher output, etc. But that isn't the point of this video. Start with what you have and grow from there. Today, the goal is to create professional lighting for a simple shot with only $32. I have a 20, a 10, and some loose change. Here's the lineup for today's gear. First up, and you've guessed it, clamp lamps. They are durable and have an ultra powerful spring clamp, no light bulb included, and can only contain up to 150 watts. Now what are you gonna put in these clamp lamps? How about these ultra bright light bulbs that measure in at around 700 lumens? And did I mention these are LED? Save that money on the energy. Bill. Next up we have a frosted shower curtain that measures at 72 by 72 inches. This man-made wonder has a two-in-one use for keeping water in the shower and also making light nice and soft. Last but not least, Parchment paper. The oven safe temperature of 425 degrees makes LED bulbs no match for the superstar product. Get these items today for the low price of $32. Now that we have the gear we need, let's start lighting the shot. When deciding on a location for filming, ideally you want to find a spot that has depth, really anything but a flat wall. But in this scenario, all that's available is this gray wall. Problems will come up in your filmmaking journey and you'll have to solve them. So this will be great practice. We're gonna use the location and low budget lighting that's available and try to make the best shot possible. Let's start by placing the subject in front of the wall. Now that the camera's position is set, here's a look at what the image is right off the bat. You can see that light from the window is making its way into the room from the left side. The natural light is important for this shot because the output of the lights are limited. Let's begin with the key light. I'll start with the 5000 Kelvin light bulb in the first clamp lamp and place it near the window positioned towards the subject. The bulb adds on to the direction of the daylight coming through the window. This is called motivated lighting. I won't get into detail because I did do a full video on this topic before, the link can be found in the description below. To soften up the light on the subject's face, I added the shower curtain. In honor of budget-friendly lighting, I used a plastic fence post instead of a boom arm to hang the shower curtain. I'll reposition each stand to get the widest spread of light from the bulb to the curtain. This looks a lot better, but if I fold and stack the shower curtain, the light is diffused more and looks even softer on the subject's skin. Before I get to the next part, an even more budget-friendly way to light a scene is to get close to a window. Find a position where the subject is lit without being in direct harsh sunlight. The intro that I had for the beginning of this video was entirely done using natural light. It's a bonus if you have shears, it makes the light even softer. Now that we have the key light set, let's get into the second light. I used the 2700 Kelvin bulb as a backlight. I'll throw it up on a boom arm behind the subject. If you're saying to yourself right now, hey, that's cheating because those stands and those clamps are out of the $32. Well, towards the end of this video, I'll show you what I'd do if I didn't have any stands or if I didn't have any clamps. Backlights separate the subject from the background, which is especially important when filming in a boring room like this. Here's no backlight, and here's with a backlight. The difference of color temperature between the 5000 Kelvin and 2700 Kelvin bulbs allow for added depth. This is what it would look like with a 5000 Kelvin bulb. And this is what it would look like with the 2700 Kelvin bulb. You can see the difference here. This looks better, but it's too bright and too hard of a light. Good thing that parchment paper is here to save the day. I'll take a strip of parchment paper and make a half dome in front of the light with the clamps. Clothespins would be a better option, but I didn't have any on me. I'll do this again, but in the opposite direction. Depending on the distance between the backlight and the subject, you may want to do this a few more times to bring down the levels and make the light softer. Our lights are in place, but we aren't quite done yet. Let's add something between the subject and the background to add even more depth and make this boring background less 
boring. I took this table with a small plant and placed it on the right side of the frame. Find anything that you have available to fill in this empty space. An object like this makes the shot fuller in a way. Real quick, before we get into the final shot reveal, here's what I would do if I didn't have any stands available. I would grab a taller chair for the key light and clamp it right on the back. For the backlight, I'd attach a broom to another chair using rope or clamps, and then attach the light at the top. You could use two more chairs or even a ladder and two more long objects like another broom or yardstick or the plastic fence post that I mentioned before, and you could hang the shower curtain between the two structures. Whether you use expensive stands or not, here's the shot you can get with just $32. These are the lights that I started out with and still sometimes use today. The lessons I've learned from them have proved to be invaluable. Gear might improve the quality, but the approach should always stay the same. If you're interested in challenging yourself and trying this low budget setup, I linked all of the gear right below. I'm gonna be diving into more low budget filmmaking topics in the future, so if you're interested, hit that subscribe button. Thanks for sticking around. See you, friends.